Hi everyone, so it's been a little while. Um, I'm glad to be doing this. I'm glad that Hashem has given me some insight. I want to talk today about Parsha Toldot. Um, many of us know the basics of this Parsha. Uh, it's when, you know, Asav uh, essentially sells off his birthright for a bowl of lentils. And, you know, for sure, so many, I think, like you guys, I probably heard so many versions and variations of what this Parsha is coming to tell us. And I got to tell you that this week, Hashem really did a wonderful thing. And I just want to bless Hashem for His mercy in opening up. Uh, don't you just love it when He just opens your mind up and gives you a new idea? <laughs> like it just hits you over the head. And uh, it was funny because sometimes, you know, you find yourself in these little predicaments and you don't know quite what to do. And it's just so thrilling when the Parsha takes on life. It, it becomes true to life, you know. And Parsha's told out. So, we see here a lot of things that almost seem very shady, if you will. You know, there's this concept of the stolen birthright. Um, all this, what would look like deceit. And it almost seems like, you know, it's enough to really make you pause and be like, what's going on here? You know, these are all supposed to be tzadikim we're talking about here. And you hear all these, you know, terms. And uh, I want to tell you, it's funny. Uh, you know, here, this Parsha really embodies what every, every person will go through in their life. It's that struggle between good and evil, just like... Rivka was told when she went to inquire of Hashem, uh, what's going on in here? You know, I passed through uh, the yeshiva and one, you know, and the child, he kicks and he, he enjoys it. And I passed by the, the houses of idol worship and the child kicks and he, and she didn't know at the time. And, and Hashem told her, there are two nations within you and uh, they, they're going to be at war with each other. And this is going to be really for all time, but that the older will serve the younger. And so we fast forward many years later, and we find that really Rivka is, is sitting on this prophecy. She has this prophecy. And one would ask, if she was told by Hashem that the older would serve the younger, why did she go and she essentially go and deceive Yitzhak? Why would she have to do it? I mean, wouldn't it just happen? Hashem said it. Hashem said it, and it should just happen. Isn't that the way it should happen? It should just fall out the sky? And, you know, we see that it didn't play out that way. In fact, she had to take matters into her own hands. And when she saw the opportunity, she struck. She saw the opportunity to, to materialize this prophecy, if you will. And we see this concept kind of playing out a few times in the Torah. And we see it again uh, with Shlomo Melech, uh, who himself, you know, he also got the, the word, the nevu, if you will, that he would be, you know, that, that he would be next on the throne after David Melech. And yet he as well also takes matters into his own hands. And you see this with Moshe Rabbeinu as well. When he goes to lift up the Mishkan, uh, he cannot do it. So Hashem lifts it up for him. And we see this kind of concept playing out of people having to take things into their own hands and Hashem coming in and just granting them success and just really doing it. And it made me really think, you know, there are some things in my own life, uh, you know, there are things that have been told to me over and over again about really the kind of life that I would have. Certain people who've known me and grown up with me and have said certain things and they really thought, you know, that all of my life experience would, would one day come to help me. And the truth is, you know, it's funny because the last uh, few months, I have to confess, the last few months, I don't know if I've been stuck in that old Charlton Heston movie like I was joking with uh, two of my friends. And if anyone has seen it, uh, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, there, you know, there's this scene where the, you know, the, the clouds break away and this loud voice comes up from Shemaim and he kind of tells him what to do. And many of us, I think we are waiting for that. We're waiting for this big, grandiose, you know, sign uh, uh, from from Shemaim. We're kind of waiting for that burning bush, bush if you will. And oftentimes we, we keep stagnant and we stay steady until we find it. And the truth is, that bush may never come to be on fire. And could it be 
that you have to take matters into your own hands and Hashem will bless it and he will make it he will he will make it uh, to the finish line and I, I really started to think about you know there are things that in my life that I feel like I have to take matters into my own hands I have to do my part if you will right and Hashem will come in and do the rest but just as like a and a side note, just an side note, this really, you know, because we can apply this to our individual life, and then, you know, we can apply this to all Am Israel. And there's this, there's been this nevuah from time immemorial, that the gila would happen on the zikhut of the righteous women. And I got to tell you, for any lady that's li- listening to this, and I don't think there's just ladies because this goes out on YouTube and everywhere, so... But I am speaking specifically to the ladies, and I am saying that I hear, like many of you, how much we want Mashiach. We want Mashiach. We want Mashiach. Mashiach now. I'm saying this to Helen for Mashiach now. And that's all great. That's wonderful. But what are we doing to actually bring Mashiach? Right? What are we actually doing? How much of our midot are we actually fixing? How much of the talents that we've been given, even the yisurim, I'm going to go as far as say, even the yisurim that we've been given, how much of that are we taken to go and to change not only our midot, but to help share that with everyone else in order that they too can find the way to break through and, and also conquer their asav, their inner asav, in order to reach that level of Yaakov, uh, which is really taking the birthright, which is a spiritual, it's something spiritual in nature. Um, you know, I think far too often, I think that I've been so willing to sell that birthright for a bowl of lentils, for the physical pleasures of this world. And this has really been an eye-opening week for me. And so there's some things that I've began to take matters into my own ha- hands with. And I really, I really pray it's like I said, uh, you know, I've, I, uh, the ball's in your court. I've done certain things in my life to kind of utilize the, um, the gifts that you've given me, the experience that you've given me. And I, and I pray that all of this was for, not for naught and uh, that you will do something really tremendous with that. And I'm really counting on you, Abishter, and I don't think that you're going to let me down. So I just want to encourage everyone in this Parsha to really examine things in their life. Uh, and where they can start to take matters into their own hands and really start to do something, not only to bring yourself to that place where you know, you know, that, that place that you strive for, that place that you want to be, to move forward. So I'm, I'm encouraging not only to do that, but to also begin doing those things, fixing those midot, and then taking that and doing something with it. You know, a lot of times it's, uh, it's very disheartening when you see people, they're sitting in shears over and over and over again, and they take, I mean, they, they sit there, it's so great, it's inspirational, and then they take, take it and they do nothing with it. And I, and I feel like sometimes that's, some, that's something that a lot of people, including myself, myself, I'm first one to say, it, you know, I think that I don't do enough. I don't do enough to actualize those things that Hashem is teaching me and telling me about. So uh, I don't know if you're like me. Uh, but Parsha's Todot is, uh, I think, is going to uh, be one of my favorites for all time and just telling me how to be proactive. So I just want to wish everyone Shavua Tov. You should have a wonderful week and Hashem should give you Hatzlacha and Abracha in all that you're doing, that everything you put your hands to will uh, flourish and succeed and that you're able to take that and share it with all of Am Israel. So that's it. Thank you, everyone, for all your support, for everything. Uh, shalom, shalom.